I'm always cautious when I tell people how much to charge for coaching is because a lot of people want to charge a drastic amount of money, but what they don't understand is there's an expectation that comes with that. There's a, there's a big difference between getting a client and maintaining a client. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all the time. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode. It was episode number 30. Should you join a podcast group, a Facebook group, a mastermind, whatever you want to consider it. If you didn't listen to that episode, make sure you go back and check it out today for episode number 31. The three questions I get asked the most. So again, at this point, I don't know how many calls I've done with podcasters, but I mean, I got to be up close to a thousand at this point. And I get a lot of times I get very similar questions, especially from people when I'm doing a podcast breakthrough session. Obviously, clients, it's a little bit different because we're focused on different things and we're working through certain things. But I actually got one of these questions today in my DMs from somebody who I've talked to. I was actually on their show and I said, hey, if you ever have any questions, just shoot me a DM and I'll, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. So all of these questions are the ones I get most often. I quite literally got one of them today. So this is the first one and this is the one I got today. Somebody sent me an audio message and said, hey, Kev, thanks so much for coming on. I hope you're having a great new year. When we talked, you talked to me about figuring out, it, well, you, you talked to me about serving my ideal listener. My ideal listener who is the type of person who wants to listen to these episodes and they like these titles and they resonate with the message. He said, the only question I have is how do I figure out who my ideal listener is? And I said, I understand that it can be a challenge because when you go and you look at your stats and you, you look at your analytics, it says whatever it may say, it might say 50% male, 50% female in these countries, in these locations, in these cities. I said, but the problem is that doesn't really tell the whole picture. So one of the pillars and one of the fundamentals that I always tell people is you have to, and this is why social media is so important, you have to be having conversations at all times on social media, and you, you've you heard me say these words before, so people can self-identify. How do I find out who my ideal listener is? You go start conversations with everybody. If somebody is watching your story, start a conversation with them. If somebody is liking your, your post, start a conversation with them. If somebody is in your Facebook group, start a conversation with them. If somebody's on your email list, start a conversation with them. All you're really looking to do is to get them to self-identify. And this is all that happens. Hey, I reach out to somebody. Hey, Steve, I hope all is well. I hope you're having a great new year. That's it. That's, my, that's how I start conversations. Steve might say back, hey, it's been great so far. I'm really enjoying their, the latest episodes. Boom. Okay, perfect. Now I know that Steve is somebody who resonates with the message. Now, after I talk to 50 people and I start to connect, okay, well, Steve, Chris, Janine, Amy, Brittany, Steph, they all have these similar things about them. They're all very confident or they all have confidence issues or they're all in relationships or they're all single. They all make a lot of money. They all don't make a lot of money. That's how you start to figure out who your avatar is. And the interesting thing about this is you do have to look at the data. This is why I always suggest tracking your listens and looking at the titles. If you did an episode on consistency and it did really well, that's a sign. If you did an episode on toxic relationships and it did really well, that's also a sign. So using that data helps us figure out who our ideal listeners are and then you can start taking shots and saying, okay, I'm gonna do an episode on money and see what happens. I'm gonna do an episode on sex and see what happens. Whatever it may be, whatever your niche is. So the way you figure out who your ideal listeners are is you have a ton of conversations with people. Again, in the beginning, I was talking to our community and I realized very quickly that our audience and our target audience is females who struggle with confidence. They have low, lower self-worth. They want more out of life, but they don't necessarily know how to get it. They want a very fulfilling relationship, which they haven't been able to figure out how to get yet. And again, the reason that was our and is our demographic is because that's who I was. I was a man who was very insecure. I didn't have a lot of belief. My self-worth wasn't high. I felt a lot of the feelings that our listeners feel. And that's why it's been 
so important for me to remember what I was like at the beginning of the journey and then figure out, okay, what episode would I resonate with? That's how we've kind of set it up. But that was based on so many conversations we had at the very beginning of the podcast, long before we were ever making money, long before we had a Facebook group, long before we were doing seven episodes a week. It all started with those one-on-one conversations. So that is what I believe to be the easiest and most effective way to figure out who your ideal listeners are. Number two, and I'm sure this is a gimme question, how do I get more listeners? So here's an interesting thing. When it comes to, if you think of it from a money perspective, okay, if you want to make more money, if you're a business and you want to make more money, there's a few ways you can make more money, but oftentimes people only focus on one. So if you want to make more money as a business, you can get more clients, you can um, adjust the margin on the money you make, right? So you can either charge more or lower your cost for whatever your product or service is. Or the third one, which I, I think a lot of people are missing in the podcast industry, you can get people to sign up for more things. You can get people to purchase more regularly. Okay. What does that mean? If you want to get more listeners, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to be exposed to more humans. It means you need to serve the current listeners that you have better. And this is what I tell people all the time. You've heard me talk about it before, turning your podcast into a business and making sure that social media serves the podcast and the podcast serves whatever, if it's a Facebook group or whatever it may be, and asking yourself, why are people going down to that next step? If you want to get more listeners, that might start by you serving your current listeners better. And all I mean by that is, how do we get somebody who only listens to one episode a month to listen to two episodes a month? That's why having a Facebook group is so important. That's why having behind the scenes masterminds or meetups or whatever it is, free events is so important. It's not necessarily because anything is going to happen in that meetup or in the Facebook group, but it might cause somebody to listen to more episodes. And think of it this way, if you have 100 people So say, uh, I don't know how to do the math here, simply, say you have a hundred listeners, quote unquote, and each of those listeners only listens to one episode a week. What would happen effectively if we got them to listen to two episodes a week, if you're doing that, or just say two episodes a month, then if we got them to listen to three episodes a month, what if you got to the point where every single one of those 100 listeners listened to every single episode you produced? That is what we're aiming for. Now, How do I get more listeners? For most people, it's time. There's a lot of things that it's very hard to equate for. I know some podcasters who they're just in a very, very niched industry. So as an example, there's somebody I, I I don't know this person personally, but I know of their show and they have a show in the sobriety field. So it's all about being a former alcoholic and how to stay sober. That is a very niche show, but there's a lot of people who need help with that. And there's not a lot of shows about it. So it's almost like sometimes your title, I mean, if you change your title, you might get more listeners. That's one of the things I talk to people about all the time is look, I know you want to title your podcast after your name, but nobody knows who you are yet. Or I know you want to have some cute title, but it does not suggest what problem you're solving in your show. That's a, that's an easy way to get more listeners is to rename your podcast to something that actually speaks to who your ideal listener is. That's one titling your episodes better is another. I think that's the thing is we all think, well, I have to go find more people. There is people there. They're just not necessarily clicking on what you want. They're not clicking on things at the rate you, you like them to. They're not coming back as often as we'd like. Now, outside of that, how do I get more listeners? Yes, you serve the current ones. You start a lot of conversations on social media and try to convert people to listeners, but you have to get out and you have to get on other shows. You have to get on other stages. You have to do collaborations with people on social media. Ultimately, you have to figure out how do I get cold eyes? How do I expose myself to people who do not know me, they do not like me, and they do not trust me? Then I can focus on warming them up. But a lot of people are worried about getting more listeners when they're not even serving the listeners that they have yet. And that's a that's something I've seen so often. And I tell people that. What are you doing to serve your current listeners? Well, I post on social media and I have a podcast. Cool, then what? Where are they supposed to go? Where do they go after the podcast? What can you do to serve them better? And then if you serve them after the podcast, they're going to come back to the podcast. So I know it's kind of a, 
I don't know, it might seem like a way out, but that's what's helped us. The, the highest months we've ever had aren't necessarily because we did anything different that month. It's just because we are trying to serve our community in many, many, many different ways. And we're trying to help them and add value beyond the podcast. And I think a lot of us lose sight of that. Other than that, you got to get cold eyes. You have to gain exposure to cold eyes, whether that's prospecting for speeches or prospecting for other shows or prospecting in Facebook groups. You can do that. I don't think there's a huge return on investment there, but I would say make sure you're serving your listeners at the deepest level if you want to get more listeners. Because what people, that's the thing. People aren't coming to me and saying, how do I get more listeners? They're saying, how do I get more listens? You get more listens by serving your community better and effectively you can go from somebody listening to one episode a week to four, or one episode a month to four episodes a month. You just 4X your listens if you do that with everybody. So that's, a, that's an interesting perspective to have. Next Level University and Kevin is exactly where you need to be if you're a podcaster. When I first started out just a few months ago, I had no clue on the direction I was going. I was getting hustled by another company that was giving me not even close to the value that Kevin and Next Level U was giving me. They literally changed the trajectory of my podcast, have helped me out tremendously. They understand the clients. I promise you, you will not go wrong with dealing with Kevin and Next Level U. I'll see you there. All right, the third one. And this is because this is what I do and this is just my specialty I guess, where I kind of live in my niche, how do I become confident enough to coach somebody? So I'll have people say, Kev, what you've told me is valuable and I love how everything is connected and at the bottom, you're coaching people. But how do I become confident enough to coach? I've never done that before. Who would want to learn from me? I don't feel like I know that much. I have a lot of imposter syndrome going on. Cool. I, that's why I always recommend you do it for free. I always recommend you start coaching for free because it's going to make you realize one of two things. One, you're further ahead than you think. Two, maybe you're not further ahead than you think and maybe it's not time for you to coach yet. Or maybe you should seek some, si some sort of outside resource. So I said this before in the past, for many of us, I think, I think certifications are band-aids for imposter syndrome. Now, it doesn't mean you're not gonna learn something, but I think for a lot of us, we assume when we get the certification, it's going to make imposter syndrome go away, when in reality, it might not. It might not. It might not fix the problem. I think coaching or starting conversations or adding value for free is the place to be. The reason why is because there's no subconscious pressure. There's not as much subconscious pressure to add value. When I do free podcast breakthrough sessions, it's not hard. It's easy for me because I know there's no money being exchanged. So it's almost like in a weird way, and again, I study and I, I research before I do all these, so I don't take them lightly, but in a weird way, oftentimes just showing up and giving somebody a little bit of advice is valuable enough because they're not paying for it. And I think that helps people build confidence where you start to understand, oh, this is what somebody's going to come to me with. This is the question I'm going to get most often. This is what I do when somebody shells up and there's resistance or whatever it may be. Now, obviously... This point is very specific to somebody who is interested in coaching, but for, for some reason, and maybe it's because the industry that we're in, all of my clients are in the self-improvement industry in some way, shape, or form, and for most of them, coaching is the way to ultimately monetize, and then you can kind of figure out where you want to go from there, but almost all of the people I've worked with have coached for free at some point, and I just think that's a great way to start. You learn what works, you learn what doesn't, you learn how to have conversations. That's the other thing is, you know, it's not easy to sell something that costs money. I mean, especially if you don't have a sales background or you're not confident in sales or you don't believe in what you're selling. But if you say to somebody, hey, uh, I've, say somebody hypothetically shares your podcast and they talk to you a lot about your podcast. This episode was so impactful. It was awesome. Uh, it really helped my perspective, whatever it may be. If you sent them a message and you said, hey, Christina, I am interested in doing some testing for coaching. I've always wanted a coach, but I never knew if it was the right time. And I believe now is the right time. It's totally free. Is that something you might be interested in? I want to do it for a month and see. 
And most people are going to say yes. Most people, if they look up to you, if they, if they look at you as the guide, why wouldn't they say yes? There's no risk to them. Now, some people will say, well, if it's good, you shouldn't give it away for free. I completely understand. I completely understand. But I literally had somebody message me today, and this was interesting. I did a podcast breakthrough session with this person, and we got really deep into her business. And at the end, I said, hey, I want to offer you another free call because I feel like I wasn't able to get as deep as I wanted to. Just use the same link and book whenever you want. And she shared some content today where I was on her podcast and I messaged her and said, hey, that free call is still on the table. Just let me know when you want to do it. And she said, honestly, I would be, what was the word she used? Something along the lines of, I would be honored to pay you for it. And I said, if you want to pay me, I'm happy, I'm happy to accept because I think that's important that I respect your decision, but I also am happy to show up for free if that is more aligned for you. I literally did it for free and then she wants to pay me the next time. That's an interesting thing about doing something for free. Sometimes the expectations are so low that you showing up, being yourself, being vulnerable, adding a little bit of value is going to be over-delivering. One of the reasons I... I'm always cautious when I tell people how much to charge for coaching is because a lot of people want to charge a drastic amount of money, but what they don't understand is there's an expectation that comes with that. There's a, there's a big difference between getting a client and maintaining a client. And I think people, they don't really talk about that. They say, well, this is how much your pricing should be. Your pricing is based on your value and it's based on what somebody's willing to pay. And I think that's an important understanding. So how do I become more confident and confident enough to coach? I think you start doing it for free. I really, really, really do because you're going to learn a lot and everything we do at the beginning, we kind of do for free. You don't get paid to drive until you figure out how to drive. And I, I think that's okay. It's okay to have imposter syndrome at the beginning. It's okay not to know what to say. It's okay to want to have some sort of outline or syllabus. Totally fine. But until you start doing it, there's, there's just nothing that can really replicate that feeling of being one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom or on the phone with somebody. And doing it for free is a great place to start. So these are the top three questions I get asked the most. And here's the interesting thing. Everyone has a deeper layer that I can also get asked later on. So uh, another question would be going back to, to number one, how do I figure out who my ideal listener is? Another question that I might get later in somebody's journey is how do I know if my ideal listener is still my ideal listener? Like, how do I know if my old ideal listener is my current one. That's a deeper dive. You might face that in a year. You might be facing that right now. How do I get more listeners? That's always going to be the question. You're always going to have that question. It's never going to go away. I, I ask myself that question all the time, but most of it is the fundamentals and it's how well am I serving the current listeners I have? And then eventually, how do I become confident enough to coach becomes how do I get more clients? And I'm happy to do an episode on that. If that's something that you want to hear, let me know because I just want to make sure that I'm not doing episodes that only resonate with 5% of you. I know not everybody is coaches. Not everybody wants to be a coach. So I don't want to do that episode if it's going to not land with people. But I am happy to do that. That is something I work with my clients a lot with. So I'm definitely happy to jump into that. So those are the three. How do I know who my ideal listener is? How do I get more listeners slash how do I get more listens really? And how do I become confident? as a coach or confident enough to coach? Those are the top three questions I get asked the most. So next week, I want to talk about, for episode number 32, I want to talk about what's your podcast brand. So I think when we're, when we're starting a podcast, it's kind of like, this is my message, this is what I'm going to talk about, and that's kind of the end. We don't really think about what we want our reputation to be. We don't really think about what we would want people to say about us if we weren't around. And here's a good analogy. If, if, uh, if you have an Apple product, and maybe you've been to the Apple store, the Apple store is very simple, it's very modern, it's very clean, it's very plain, high tech, right, it's bold. If Apple had a restaurant, you kind of know what the restaurant would look like because it would represent their brand. What is your podcast brand? So that's what I want to talk about in episode number 32, which will be next week. I'm also going, so I'm going to be at PodFest. So if you're listening to this, it is Friday. So I'm actually at PodFest right now. If you are listening to this episode and you're here, 
message me on Instagram. I'm happy to, to maybe meet up depending on what's going on, what time it is. I'm doing a panel on Saturday on mindfulness and spirituality. Spirituality, be nice if I can speak. So I will be at PodFest from Wednesday to Sunday. So if you're a podcaster and you're down there, you want to meet up, I'm happy to answer any questions in person, whatever. Just let me know. I would love to have the opportunity to meet the wonderful, wonderful community that we are building. So make sure you tune in next week. What's your podcast brand? As always, I will have a link in the show notes for a free call. I have done more podcast breakthrough sessions in the last two months than I did in prob probably the previous six. So things are really starting to pick up, which I'm very grateful for. I'm learning so much about the community. I'm learning so much about podcasters. And ultimately, that helps me produce better content, answer questions in a more value-driven way, and just understand what's going on better. So again, I will not sell you on anything. I just want to add value. And if you have these questions, I can literally take you through what I would do if I was you. What's the name of your show? How are you titling your episodes? There will definitely be value in there. As always, thank you all. I appreciate you all. Keep on podcasting. Keep on crushing it. And I will talk to you all next week.
Hi there. This is Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and I am the host of the Business of Happiness podcast, which would not be in existence were it not for the one and only incredible Kevin Palmieri. Seriously, I am so indebted to Kevin for the service that he provides. Every week he meets with me. He has been coaching me on how to initiate and launch this podcast. He helped me put it together with his great expertise. Hey, and I wanted to give my experience working with Kevin and the rest of the Next Level University team. It has been such 